Today's video is sponsored by our supporters on Patreon. Welcome back. <laughs> in our last video, we discovered lots of gaps and issues we had in our CNC process. I can't rewrite scripture. I obviously had to redo it. It's the message version. <laughs> right now, these are what we need to focus on. So basically, in this video, we want to try to tackle them and figure them out. We had gaps in our knowledge. We had gaps in the process we had to build. So we're going to figure out how we can fix those. This one's for you, Paul Jackman. build this box from somebody in our new unit. There is a retirement going on. So it's just gonna be a box with a couple of glasses, a bottle of rum I think they're gonna put in it instead of whiskey. Very, very similar to the ones we've built before. Um, just this time around, we're doing a lot more carving on the lid with the CNC. So since this box is so similar to the other ones that we've built, we know that we typically charge a price of $150. We figured out that if we just built two at the same time, we can multiply our profit by four or five times. So if you'll remember, in the last one, we underbid the job. We only charged 100 bucks. We sold this one for 150, thinking that we were correct in our estimation of what we should have done last time. Well, what that means now is that I said we could build this box in three hours. So we're expecting $90 in labor. And we also know that it's gonna be around $40 in materials just with the walnut and the, the tooling and everything else which only leaves us $20 of profit. So essentially, this is not our normal pricing formula. What we need to do is we need to get the labor rate down. Now, one of the ways that we can do that is we can build multiple boxes at the same time. We know we're probably gonna sell another one, so we can go ahead and wrap up the labor and make two boxes at once, which is exactly what we're gonna do. Then the next time that we sell one, it's already ready to go, and all we gotta do is engrave the lid and ship it out. Sometimes it doesn't make sense to build things one-off. If you've seen our cutting board video where I made a cutting board for $100, it just doesn't make sense sometimes to just build one of something. So we're gonna build two of these knowing that we're gonna sell the other one. Make multiples and cut down on your labor rate because now it might take us an extra hour to build two boxes instead of one box. All of a sudden now, instead of $20 profit or $40 if you're building two, now we have $100 in profit. So our profit margin goes way, way up just by spending another hour and building a second box. When we eventually do sell it, we'll make $100 profit on both boxes instead of just $20 on one box.
have tried this no less than four times. I'm not joking. I've had four attempts. All of them have gone terribly. I have not gotten one good carve yet um, because of this issue. I did so many tries <laughs> all over the front and back, obviously not wanting to waste precious walnut. So basically I want to use a 1 8 inch bit first to get the majority of the material out and then I want to switch out to the 60 degree V bit so that I can get all of my detail and lettering and all that stuff done. So after a bunch of failed attempts trying to make this work on the CNC, we looked at some of your YouTube comments and suggestions because that video was published while we were working on all these problems with the CNC. And you guys had some awesome suggestions. So one of the things that you guys recommended while we were figuring out changing bits was to use the lock motors command. And we found the button for that and we tried it and ours doesn't work. For some reason, Easel does not lock the motors for us when we hit that button. I went back into some of the Inventables forums and apparently it's a pretty common issue. And to solve it, you have to get into the G code and turn things on and off and different switches. And since we're on a deadline for this whiskey box, I don't have time to mess around with it. I have a deadline. I just straight up, I just got to get it done. But eventually we will go back into the G code, dig around and figure out how to make the lock motors button work. So a lot of you suggested that we use VCarve as a new software and that's what we're going to do. We do want to get into VCarve Pro, but again, that's going to take us a while to learn because it's a brand new software. We also tried homing the machine between rough carve and detailed carves, and that didn't work either. So because nothing else was working, we decided to just go with a one bit carve. We were using the 60 degree bit, and we've noticed in the last six months of like actively using the CNC, that's the bit we use the most, just because it does everything we need it to. And for a big carve like this, yes, it's gonna take a bit longer, but at least we know it's gonna get done, and we know it's gonna get done right. So we decided that two bit carves are on hold. For now, we're only doing one bit carves until we can dive into VCarve Pro and learn that software and until we can get into the G code and figure out how to use the lock motors button. And as for the dust boot, my arch nemesis, a lot of you recommended the suck it dust shoe and that's probably what we're going to go with. We're probably going to pick one of those up and use that instead of what we're using now because we hear a lot of good things about it. And then the last thing is the clamping method that we were struggling with. So instead of using these little, uh, screw down Allen key fastener thing, plastic dills that the bit always runs into and breaks. We are gonna use double-sided carpet tape. A lot of you suggested the blue tape and CA glue method, which works great, but that takes time and that's a skill that we would have to teach an employee. So the better solution would just be to buy an off the shelf product and hand it to them because double sided tape is way more intuitive to use than trying to teach them how much glue to squeeze out so it doesn't get on the wood and then you've glued your wood down to the MDF because it's spilled out from where you put the tape down. It's just, it's just more opportunity for things to go wrong. So Josh from I Like To Make Stuff reached out to us and told us that the type of tape he and Bob use all the time is the double-sided carpet tape from Lowe's. They say it's really strong, doesn't leave a residue. It's really easy to work with. So that's what we're gonna go with moving forward for a clamping method. And anyway, it's just been amazing to see you guys supporting and helping us out. And these are not new issues. We're not the first ones to deal with this. So it's really helpful that there's already a bunch of data out there. A lot of you who watch a lot of content already know the best method that other people have tried. So that really helps save us a lot of time. But yeah, in the future going forward, the best way that you can get your idea or your suggestion across to us is just to leave a really helpful, thoughtful YouTube comment down below the video. We read all of those. We don't always have time to consume everything on Instagram or emails or anything like that, but we definitely do read all the YouTube comments. So that's the best place to help us if you wanna contribute. about the elephant in the room. 
That's not the elephant, that's the horse. Sorry, my mistake. We'll address we'll address the horse in the room later. Uh, we've been gone for a little while. We haven't put out a video in about a month now. And while we have a lot of excuses, we have one really good one. And that is because we've started our new job. Um, we're in processing and we're getting everything set up there. And it's always really crazy when you start a new job, um, but especially in the military, it's just, a process. So it's taken a lot of time. Appreciate you guys sticking around and we're excited to finally get another video out. So we were able to get a lot of footage stacked up. We did a couple of collaborations and so there's some really good stuff coming. Uh, we released our new set of programs. If you mm -hmm. saw on Instagram, we were blasting that everywhere. The response has just been amazing. Yes. Holy snot. I can't believe you guys just support us in the way that you do. And we're really glad that you guys think the programs are valuable. Um, mm -hmm. We haven't given a single ref. We didn't give many refunds on the old programs, but on these, none of you have asked for a refund. Um, and that's just that just tells us how much better we're getting at communicating. What we're learning really is helping people. And, and that's a lot of thanks to the people that did respond to the first programs um, with what they thought about them, with suggestions, with any feedback, because now we've fixed everything or added things that people thought, you know, they'd also like to be in the programs. Yeah, another thing is uh, the Patreon supporters. We've had yes. a pretty big wave recently of new people joining the Stud Stack, which is our private Facebook group. Yeah, um, it's and getting just, fun in there. It is. It's exciting. Yeah, it's it's just so great to see so many other people winning and succeeding yes. with the same information. And we're not in competition with each other. Where else in the world are you yeah. in a group of people running the same kind of business, but you're not butting heads with each other? You're sharing your goals, you're sharing your techniques and your tips. And it's just, it, anyway, the stud stack is just starting to get really fun. Yeah. We've got a ton of stuff planned in 2020. We just got done with mm -hmm. our planning meeting this morning. So the stud stack is going to be lit this next year. Yeah. Um, lots of really cool ideas. So quick plug for that. Uh, but Anna, thank, thank you. <laughs> yes. Thanks all of you guys in the stud stack and all of you that just watch continuously. Like that's, it's just huge to us. It's not, mm -hmm. it's amazing that we've grown our channel just in this one year from what, seven or 8,000 subscribers to like 40 something thousand. Mm -hmm. we, we've just been incredibly blessed and we're super grateful for it. We hope that you have a fantastic Christmas, new year, whatever you celebrate. I'm glad that you think that we're worth watching, <laughs> I guess. So it's mostly because Bruce is worth uh, watching. Yeah, it's mostly. It's most sleepers, right? People comment and say more Doberman. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Uh, hit the like button if you're still around and uh, subscribe if you haven't already. We try to put out content of us growing a furniture business in the Houston area. And yeah, it's been a lot of fun so far. Uh, You'll have a great year and we look forward to seeing you in 2020.